Meteorological. 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 Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo. Listen up. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. Welcome back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnees, come on, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. Feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome, Wi-Fi's, to my Oracle episode of The Wireless Woman. In this episode, I will be sharing with you everything that the good Lord, the great sky God, has been showing me. And this one is way overdue so i'm going to do my best with it and hopefully it'll be what we all need to hear right now so you already know what time it is what are we gonna do tomorrow night the same thing we do every night pinky try to take over the world it is time to call the roll i need all of my believers those that are still holding on to a little bit of help to the front of the class it is time to read aloud She said, somebody give me a pen. Give me a pencil. I have a prophecy. All right. Welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to another episode of The Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. If you haven't already, for whatever insane reason, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you will be alerted when I upload new content today we are going to be getting into my oracle episode of the wireless woman i told you all before that i want to start trying to do my prophecy videos maybe like quarterly but of course i can only do them as i am released to do them and this one actually has been long delayed however we are here today to get these things done. I hope to be able to bring my prophecies as completely and succinctly as possible. So um, my purpose for prophesying for even putting this information out is to help prepare the black community, particularly black women. Unfortunately, our community is so deeply engrossed in division and distraction that we really aren't paying attention to a lot of signs and times that are surrounding us. Um, a lot of elements are closing in on the black community. And I think there's this sense amongst black people that, you know, we're each individually going to make it on our own, that we don't necessarily need the collective in order to survive, you know, these coming tides however nothing could actually be further from the truth than that and if you look at other communities of people asian communities indian communities which yes india is in asia but that's not my point hispanic communities really white communities they've always kind of stood together from the beginning of time that's what allows such a small group such a small ethnicity to be able to globally dominate the world is their solidarity and unfortunately at this stage even they need help you know and we're watching a whole lot of resources be put into hbcus you know into black communities we're watching a lot of black people being um, elevated through the ranks of different organizations and the purpose is to be able to procure and hold on to the favor of God. The purpose is much like how Pharaoh used Joseph to save the Egyptian people. 
it was Joseph's contribution to Egyptian economics that allowed him to actually deliver his own people as well. And had it not been for the preservation of Joseph's people, the chosen people of God would have been cut off with the rest of the world had Egypt not been saved. So we're watching a lot of last ditch effort to use black people as we've always been used in this country to save the social, political, and economic makeup. The problem with that, though, is that black people will allow themselves to be used by the powers that be, by the European and white collectives, but then don't lend themselves back to their own community, don't lend their same greatness to building their own communities. And that allows us to continuously be the subject of repression and oppression. You know, that's what makes it important for us to lift the whole entire collective because there's power in the collective, in the group. You can have black capitalism, but you can't have black power without an undivided sovereign black nation. We also work to unify diverse groups of black people, African people. We believe that there should be unity without uniformity, that all black groups must be able to work together around common purposes. You know, that's what the whole Civil War was over, not allowing the country to be divided because the collective was so much more powerful than it would have been if it had been allowed to divide. So these are some of the value systems that black people are also going to have to embrace and understand is that none of us are going to be great individually unless we can likewise mirror that greatness collectively. We have to understand that we're talking about our survival and nothing else. Whether or not this beautiful race of people is going to survive on the earth. That's what we're talking about. Nothing else. Nothing else. What we're going to be seeing over the next couple of years is an unprecedented time of peace and prosperity for black people. When I say peace, I don't necessarily mean from the internal strivings. That's going to be our choice and our choice alone, whether we decide to use the prosperity that's coming towards us to unify and build our community and to begin to procure political, economic, social power meaning influence. We're at a point right now where we're seeing the government's ability to take back power, what we call rights, but it's actually just our power, our autonomy, our self-determination to be able to do what we want to do. So we are going to continue to see a whole lot of the state taking over power to determine things. This is going to cause a whole lot of upheaval because a lot of people are going to begin to have to move states in order to retain rights. Um, that's what you're seeing with the overturning of Roe versus Wade. That's not actually really going to, in my spirit, I keep feeling that they're not actually going to be able to overturn Roe versus Wade, not even the Supreme Court. But if it does actually happen, um, it's not going to make a huge day-to-day -day change for most people. However, overturning historical laws like that is more of a sign to us that the totalitarian government is coming. Um, the problem with words like communism, socialism, capitalism, totalitarianism, Marxism, is that people no longer know what those terms really mean. So you hear them being thrown around by parties, blocks of power, people who have an interest in either things changing or things staying exactly the same. And so they will tend to vilify these terms and people will go with the emotions or the feelings of groups of people or certain parties or certain sects of society without actually knowing what they're for or against without actually knowing what these terms mean. So America is mistakenly confused for being a democracy when it's actually a constitutional republic. We're going to be moving towards a more authoritarian, totalitarian government. And there's a reason for that that I'm going to get into a little bit later in this episode. However, we have to be careful 
to know what we're actually aligning ourselves with. And political systems, economic systems, financial systems, these things aren't really taught in school. So you could literally get a master's degree and never actually know how the economy of America works. You can actually be, you know, a a standing politician and not really have been well versed on different forms of government. You know, we're educated in these systems that push us towards agreement with certain philosophies and theories without actually having to examine any other ones. As I've said in other episodes, we're not going to see Joe Biden finish this term. And I still don't feel comfortable saying what I have seen bring the end to his presidency. But Kamala Harris will be there to take up the reins of the presidency and finish this term. I don't see the Democrats getting a second term as they shouldn't. Black people, we really need to move away from this two party system in this country. Neither the Republicans nor the Democrats have our best interests in mind. If we are able to, as a people, form a black nationalist party, form a party, a block of power that's able to actually influence not just the outcomes of elections, but the hand of politicians. Because once they get elected, once they get us all out to vote for them, and then they get elected, they're done with all the work that they're going to do for the black community. So in order for us to be able to hold on to the political power that we wield beyond elections, we need to have a centralized party of people who are making policies for what black people need in order to uh, be solvent in this country. That doesn't happen outside of elections. Black people are rarely organizing around political agendas. We have racial agendas, we have community agendas, we have gender agendas, but we don't really have a black collective. It just doesn't exist. So we're not able to push any sort of unified solidarity or policies forward. We're too stratified as a people to come to an agreement on what we want to see politicians do. So they know they don't actually have to cater to the community. They just have to procure the vote once they got that. You know, what do we really want as black people, as a collective? Black people could very well disappear as a people and certainly lose all prospect for black political, economic, and social power and unity. Like if they gave us all the power, all the money right now today, it would just end right back up in white hands because the black dollar only spends about six hours in the black community. We haven't built any institutions that really need to be funded other than our HBCUs. We must deal with the problem that confronts black people by building black institutions. If we don't start to address the school to prison pipeline, In elementary school, you know, who really cares about a whole bunch of Greeks and HBCU life and all that stuff that's dealing with the issue after it's already a problem rather than getting it at the root. So, you know, these are the issues with the dissolution of the black church. We're really not seeing any community initiatives actually being unified to create blocks of political, economic, social power. We have to have black power. And like I said, black power is important at this time because that's what these uh, politicians and organizations are using to hold on to their power. They're siphoning ours. During these next couple of years, we're going to see a lot more billionaires taking over whole industries like Elon Musk buying Twitter is just kind of one of the things that's going on because a big part of this authoritative totalitarian movement in government, we're also going to see that in private industry as well. As far as monopoly starting to form where there's just one company that kind of owns everything. Um, We've got Bill Gates buying up all of the farmland in India and parts of the Middle East. And we have Elon Musk taking over all of media, uh, cryptocurrency, blockchain. I don't know what these things mean. I'm just seeing it in the spirit realm. Um, So each one of these eccentric millionaires that we have, Jeff Bezos and all these people, they're kind of picking which mountain, which there are. So there are seven 
mountains of influence, if you will. Lance Wallnow talks a lot about this stuff. If you go over to White Christian YouTube, there are actually several that do it. So the seven mountains are uh, mountain number one, media and communications. Mountain number two, they don't have to be in this order, but we're just saying in this order. Education, number three, the mountain of government. Number four, the mountain of celebration of arts and entertainment and sports. Number five, the mountain of family. Number six, the mountain of economy or business. And number seven, the mountain of religion or worship. But we always thought of the Antichrist, the beast, you know, being this one person, but it's actually described as being a beast with seven heads and 10 horns. So these seven heads are these billionaires, these eccentric billionaires that we have that are making more and more and more and more and more and more money off the decline of the economy. So like I said, you have uh, Elon Musk taking over pretty much all of technology. You have um, Bill Gates dealing with agriculture and food sources. And of course, they're in India buying up all of that land, saying that they're using it to learn how to, you know, uh, feed the world. And they've got all these great altruistic reasons. Um, Elon Musk is taking over Twitter to preserve free speech and all that stuff. But all of these things are setting the stage for a new world order, antichrist, totalitarian, one world government. And that government, like I said, is go not going to be led by politicians and things like that. It's going to be led by these people, um, these, these billionaires, these wealthy people. And those are going to be the people that affect policy and laws and rules and the reason why this is problematic and a lot of people don't think you know like oh you know it's love is love and we're all one human race we're all one human people so then why is it that the people with all of this money and power are almost exclusively white and I know what you guys are saying well there's Jay-Z there's Beyonce they do not have these people's money they're trying to get money and hold on to money so that they're not devoured and destroyed by the beast like you and I will be. These upper multimillionaires and billionaires are an integrated part of the beast. If you trust any one of them, you're you're lost, like spiritually lost and not really fit for the kingdom of God because you have to understand that while there's this great gathering for people that are going to be on the side of the beast there's also this very way more overwhelming gathering of people that want to be on the side of right and that's what we have to understand as the black people that those same division lines that we're going to see with countries and nations of the world that we're going to see with other communities, we have it within our own community. And that's why those of us that want to preserve peace and do good and do right have to unify with each other. It's not enough to have that singular desire for good. And it's not enough to try to pursue, you know, riches and uh, assets and, and things in this realm and in this life. We really got to be more focused on the collective at this point. Because if you look at the war that's going on in Ukraine, which I'm going into now, um, if you look at the war in Ukraine, when black people showed up to get on those trains, the people who knew the resource was limited said no. So black people, we don't have the trains. We don't have the planes. We don't have the infrastructure that we really need in order to be able to mobilize people and preserve life and triage people. You know, the same police that we've seen kill black people in the street are going to be the ones that are responsible. You know, the National Guard, all these people are going to be called in in the time of calamity and the resources are going to be scarce. So the resources are going to go to the community that has provided them in the first place. Um, and since we're spending so much more than we make and we're spending our money on liabilities, we're not a huge part of the taxing class. We're not a huge part of the land owning class. We don't have any collateral for the things that we are going to be needing. And we're going to have to go back into slavery and give our bodies for that. So it's very important that black people who can right now 
begin to own their own plots of land and have what we will call one day sovereignty. That sovereignty is going to be able to allow a lot of black people to live and not perish in the systems that are coming um, soon. Like this isn't something that's 40 or 50 years away or even really 10 years away at this point. So um, the war in Ukraine is going to get really bad. It's not going to stop. Um, the war in Ukraine is not even for Ukraine. Russia is going to completely decimate and destroy that country because there are things um, that the U.S. put over in that country to start a war, to be quite honest. And they did. That war is going to end up starting to pull other people into it on different sides to try to stop it. But Putin going to march Russia right across the continent and do his best. Um, North Korea is coming in on the side of Russia. But in an interesting turn of events, China is actually going to come in on the side of America. And that's why we're seeing a lot of moves that are being made right now that don't really make a whole lot of sense to like American democracy, but it is because we are deeply um, in league with and indebted to China. That's the only place where we can put stuff that Russia won't attack it. So a lot of things um, between these two nations are a lot more aligned than you would think. Um, and that's why we're seeing such a push and such a move in America back towards conservatism. Because one thing China ain't going to do is come over here and buy into all of this wild, wild West capitalism that we got going on over here. With that being said, the Trumps are coming back into office after this whole administration is done doing their dirty work for them. Because let's, let's be honest, <laughs> I really feel like even though I can't say I heard this from the Lord, that Biden and Trump are in a room somewhere deciding on what they're both going to work together to do next. One of these administrations is really not very much different than the other and it's actually I feel like a prop up for what is coming next so once the Trumps come back into power we're going to be dealing with America as a superpower um, kind of like what we saw in World War II um, with whole nations trying to hold on to large blocks of global power so yeah it's going to get really really bad and from what I see a large part of America is going to be destroyed um, but I don't necessarily think it's because of war. From what I see is from natural disaster. It's um, from an asteroid that's coming to hit the earth. And that is what Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk are on the moon for. Elon Musk is providing the reusable rockets for them to get back and forth up there to take massive amounts of resources, which uh, Jeff Bezos has from Amazon up and store it on the moon so that they can live up there for several years after this asteroid hits the earth so the war is still coming charles and i intend to fight it by any means necessary so we're going to start to see a lot of meteorological changes in the atmosphere around the earth and they're going to ascribe it to a whole lot of different things until they kind of can't explain it away anymore they're going to use the same tactic that they used during the pandemic to explain the evolving virus that just kind of never really made any sense but we went along with it because we were so afraid of not going along with it and what could happen they're going to start to use that to explain away a lot of just really weird weather and astrological phenomenon that isn't going to be making any sense but that's because they already knew that the meteor was heading here but they couldn't tell us that because of global panic like it would be mad max beyond thunderdome <laughs> on every street in every home it would be martial law people stocking up on guns it, it would be a martial state like it would be complete and total utter chaos if they told us what was really going on in space what i have seen is over the next i want to say like two months there is going to be some large weather event that's going to hit america and really devastate people it's going to be on the scale of like what katrina was um, and we're going to see a whole lot of devastation and chaos in this particular area of the country because of this weather event. 
And, you know, God has been showing me some things that like are not really big, huge events. They're just little things like current events that are just really silly. And for me, I'm like, well, God, why are you showing me that? And he's like, it's a calibration because when the little things that I'm seeing are happening, it's proof that the bigger things are true as well. You know, it's a it's a calibration. Prophets have to be calibrated. If you prove faithful in the little thing, you'll be given much. So I do see that. Um. Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson, this is like a really real relationship. Like I know these shenanigans that they're putting on to like mess with Kanye are silly, but evidently they do really have a really real relationship and she is soon going to become pregnant by him and have his child. And we can look forward to them being kind of like how Courtney and Travis are. So yeah, it's kind of nonsensical and pointless to me, but I did see her becoming pregnant most likely before the end of this year. Um, so the biggest things right now that I'm really seeing is just a whole lot of draining the swamp financially. Um, the middle class is going to be completely crushed and destroyed over the next two years. And America is going to become a very feudal country. Um, with just serfs and lords, pretty much like in your mindset, you think to yourself like, OK, well, I'll just become a lord then. But you're not going to be able to get there competing with the billionaires in this country without a collective group, because we not only just need money, like enough money and resources to make it through hard times. We also need power rights if we're going to hold on to freedom, then we're going to have to get organized. We want freedom. We want the power to control the destiny of our black communities. That's the one thing billionaires don't have to have. They don't need your approval, clearly. And that's going to be the thing that's going to allow a lot of these altruistic um, excuses for why they're controlling large sectors of society, media, food production, technology, you know, and the excuse from the government for giving these people more and more and more money to hold on to power is going to be increasingly that they're saving us from, you know, terrible things that are going to happen. Um, some of these meteorological um, events that are going to happen, it's going to be technology that's going to help and save people. And that's going to be the thing that allows the government to start taking power from people and voting on initiatives that are going to give these people more and more and more money. Because as I said, they're setting up space stations in space to try to be able to evacuate this planet, not with us or anything like that. No, with rich people, you know, giving them a place to go when this asteroid hits, because, and here's the thing, there's a biblical basis for everything that I'm saying. The Bible talks about the star wormwood hitting the earth. It talks about the 144,000 that are going to be raptured up to see the Lord. That's like a very specific number of people. And it's a little too weird to think that those people are just better than everybody else. And they just get to go with the Lord because their character is so immaculate. Like, no, this is how many people they have slated for the amount of resources that they need to live on the moon when this whole situation happens. Um, the Bible is a very complex instruction book. It has to be decoded properly by people who understand its meaning, um, who understand its relevance and importance. And we have been lulled to sleep with a lot of religion that is giving us, um, that's, that's pacifying us. You know, um, we've seen a lot of socialist movements be pacified over the years. And so it's taken away our ability to reason for ourselves because we have such a great dependence on God or the state or, you know, just whatever it is that we have put at the center, our identities, our, you know, whatever it is that we've put at the center of our worship. Those things are distracting us from actually looking up and seeing what's going on around us, whether it's the worship of your own image, men, women, whatever it is, this media that's constantly being put in front of our face. If you can remember the um, movie Wally. Wow. Make a place. Grief. That's what we are here on earth. 
now. Like Earth is the space station. And a lot of us aren't going to make it because we don't believe what's really going on. We're in a state of cognitive dissonance that's allowing us to believe what we're being told instead of what we actually see. And that's happening from a relationship level. Like you literally got black women in relationships with black men telling you what to believe about having a good relationship with them, despite the fact that you can look around your community and know that everything they're telling you is a lie. It's just like black people in a white system listening to white people tell us like, oh, you've got equal opportunity with us, even though we can look around and know that that is a lie. It's like we're looking at politicians in America telling the American people how they're prioritizing our health and well-being and doing what's best for our border. And we can look around, we can see all those people in cages at the border and know that they're telling us a lie. But it's like you just fall in love with the idea that your needs are going to be met and everything's going to be okay and everything's going to be taken care of. Like, you know, they're telling us that the war in Ukraine don't have nothing to do with them, even though clearly it does. The fact that America sent billions, multi billions of dollars over to the Ukraine is proof that they're trying to protect some type of investment. Now, they can't tell you what they did over there, so they can't get enough support from the American people to actually go in boots on the ground to war. Not to mention the fact that America is so economically stretched with trying to get this space program up in space. And a lot of that is actually what's behind this war with them in Russia. Um, But they can't take money to go to war with Russia across the continent because of how much that would cost like a defensive war costs a whole lot less than an offensive one where you actually got to go to your enemy. So basically America's not going to get involved in this fight until it gets all the way to our, to our shores. And that's simply because like I said, our main goal right now is this space program that we got. That's the whole reason why Donald Trump created the space force and all that different stuff. Cause they've been new about this. Right now, our government is trying to get as much money from its people as possible to fund all of this, you know, and to continue um, media campaigns that are going to keep telling us that what we see is not what's really going on and all that stuff, which is why all the billionaires are helping bail them out by buying out all the media companies so that they can control the narrative once things stop making sense. Um So, yeah, it's really a whole lot bigger than that. And I see these things. And that's why I'm always on this channel urging continuously black people that we come together and try to figure out how we can stomp out all of this division between us. I know that the things that I talk about on my channel seem arbitrary, but it's like I said, that cognitive dissonance that makes us believe our government is telling us the truth and that we should be aligned with the Democratic Party and that we should be, you know, going to college and going hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt to get an education and a degree that literally translates to nothing economically like all of these things can be tracked all the way back down to the cognitive dissonance in the relationships between black men and black women if we can't put that down you know these beliefs that we have these negative beliefs this trauma from the past all that if we can't put that aside we can't break the bubble of cognitive dissonance everything comes out of that like how i said the building block of black institutions is the black family the black community the black neighborhood You know, they've been convincing us since the 50s and 60s to leave our own community, you know, and that stems all the way back to plantation days when they were teaching us that other black people were out to get us and against us and that our best safest bet was to be on the side of the plantation owner. That's how they quelled so many rebellions was by having black people on the inside that were coming back, telling them what was going on. So... If we don't get that out, every great thing that we've done coming out of slavery, coming out of the civil rights movement was something that white people handed us in exchange for our freedom, in exchange for us being willing to think for ourselves and challenge the powers that be. And that's the reason why I talk about the things that I talk about on my channel, because we have to challenge the powers that be. To make everybody see, in order to fight the powers that be. Black men, black women are not going to submit to you. It's not in our best interest. 
We have to burst the bubble of cognitive dissonance and understand that no one needs to be submitting to anyone right now. We all need to be trying to figure out how we can harness as much power economically, politically, socially as possible. We need our own media stations. We need our own transportation. We need our own food sources or else I promise you when this earth goes dark, when that asteroid takes out the communication systems, when this social media that y'all love so much goes down and you're in the dark with the person that's next to you, you want them to be a person that wants the same things that you want and is willing to work with you to get them. You don't want it to be people that don't look like you and want to take what you have from you by any means necessary. By any means necessary. They told you the person who said that was a dangerous person. But when you watch people do the very same things that they condemned you for, it's hard to submit to that person. And black men, that's why you're not going to see that from black women, because they're watching you act just like white supremacists. Because all misogyny finds its root in white supremacy. Like I always say, misogyny is just racism, sexy cousin. We are going to have to remove oppression from us as a people and learn how to live as a community or else we will all perish. And when I say we will all perish, I'm talking about y'all, because if everything that I've seen in my prophecies are true, I will not be here for whatever reason to see these things come to pass. But I make these videos to leave instructions for the people who one day won't be too busy to listen. See, the thing about black people is because we have been chosen by God, because we were the original people, we're the people who bear not just the curse, because we do bear the curse, but we also bear the blessing. We're also the last that shall be first because we are the people in whom God chose to encode the blessing. Like, we don't even understand. That stuff is encoded all the way down in our DNA. We are the people who are naturally gifted to be the greatest. We have to begin to procure within ourselves what our superpower will be that's going to save the world. And instead of selling it at a premium to white people, we're going to have to use it to build a more selfless group of people that once they've achieved something great will also have the heart capacity to share it, to understand that what is eating this country and this world alive is not scarcity, it's greed. We cannot be the same people that our oppressors have been. We cannot become black imperialists taking whatever power Whatever autonomy, independence, as y'all call it, from whatever group of people has it. We don't want to be the people who step foot on a continent of people who are living freely, happily, and cooperatively with each other, trying to figure out how we can subject those people in order to take from them what they freely shared with us we can't have that type of heart condition within us especially towards our own people but eventually not towards everyone else we got to go back to being godly people made in the image of god and seeing god in each other or else we've perished already and all hope for any peace on this planet is gone we've been kept in chains together on ships brought here against our will on ships together in chains and we would have the audacity to look at each other knowing that we got and try to take even more than what's already been extracted from us by this country from each other I just can't get it I just can't understand it and I'll <laughs> Hoppo will have to kill me dead before I let him beat me I love Hoppo God knows I do, but I kill him dead for I let him beat me. So I'm hoping we can start putting this together one by one and caring 
about each other. All this stuff that I heard that I put in my last episode about all these black men that kept telling me, if we can't get what we want, you're not going to get what you want. If y'all not going to take care of us first, we're not going to come back and build this community. If I can't have all the women I want, I don't even care. One man said this to me. He said, I don't care what happens to the community if I can't get me me. And I just need you to know the same way that Kevin Samuels dropped dead, that's the judgment of God to give you an opportunity to now look at your life and decide whether that's what you want said about you after you're gone. And here's the thing. Some people don't care. They're like, whatever, after I'm gone, I'm gone. Why should I care? But here's the thing. You do only live once, but you also only live forever. In the same way a baby grows in the womb and brings whatever it had in the womb into this next life. If a baby had deficiency in the womb, it comes into this life with a handicap, with a deficiency. And we don't actually really know what comes next. We know what we believe comes next. But whatever you put in your heart, your mind and your body and your soul, like we know babies in the womb can hear music, can hear their mothers read, that you can begin to train your child in the womb for how they're going to come out afterwards with your sleep patterns, with the food that you eat. All of these things prepare how that baby's going to come out. And everything that you do in this life and your character, because that's all you can take with you, is what translates into the next life. Whatever you believe that is, whether you believe you're coming back as a caterpillar or you're going to heaven or hell, you're going to go on the basis of your character. And some of the things that y'all have said and done to your own community, children that you have abandoned, women whose self-confidence you've tried to destroy, you tried to destroy them like you was destroyed. Hurt people hurt people. I get it. But just understand it's nothing but pain for you in your next incarnation if you can't heal that and fix that now. And that's for everybody, men or women, that think that's a joke or think that's a game. But the only reason why I have chosen to side with my women, unlike all these other male-identified misogynistic women that are really telling men that the stuff that they've allowed in this black community is okay. The only reason why I've decided to stick with my women is because when I look around in my community at who is putting oil on the heads and the hands of old people, who is giving baths and putting food in the mouth of babes. When I look at, you know, who's trying to educate the children, who it's by and large, the black women. I'm not saying there's no black men there. I'm saying there's not enough that are willing to sacrifice themselves for their community like what I have seen black women do. And God chooses the weak things of man to shame the strong. And he's chosen black women for this time. If he, if he did put black men on top, you guys have shown him and us what you would do with that position. And you would do what we've seen white men do, and we just don't trust you no more. Which becomes like a phenomenon to me because I don't like white people and I'm afraid of black men, right? You know, this time has to be about healing our community. And like I said, for every black man that wants to use his hands to heal his community, you are the greatest resource that we have. But I should not have to bow my head for you to do what you were born to be and do. And the largest source of your discontentment and anger at people in your community is not being useful. It's not doing what you were destined to do. As I get and mull and pray over new prophecies that come to me, I definitely do more prophecy episodes and and bring you what I'm seeing as I see it and as I approve it. Because I don't just say everything I see, you know, and some things, some words are just sent to test you. Um, You know, I reserve the right to be wrong about things because, like I said, being a prophet is a practice, like a doctor, like a lawyer, anything else. Anyone who's trying to be right has a spirit of antichrist in them. It's not about being right. It's about being available. So these are the things I've seen. You know, whatever is meant to be will come to pass. Um, We did move, like I said, from one dimension into another, from one age into another in 2020. And to be quite honest, Sometimes I'm struggling in this new dimension because I came out of the old one. Some of the people that are here have been here the whole time uninterrupted in their consciousness in this particular dimension. And so they'll seem a little bit different from people that came through the portal 
from another dimension. I know that sounds wild. I know it really does. But some people who came from the other dimension, they know what I'm talking about. Like you sit around with people and you're like, it's no way you like, did y'all evolve to this? Like, you know, you're on a different plane from other people, you know, you're vibrating on a whole different frequency. And it's because you came from somewhere else. And the only reason why you came from somewhere else and God sent you here is to save this group of people. Like for the people who hear what I'm saying and it kind of like resonates with you and it wakes something up in you and you feel something that's like, wait a minute, I knew something wasn't quite right, but I couldn't put my finger on it. You came with me <laughs> from this other dimension and our dimension was being destroyed. It was being destroyed because of something that we didn't have the courage to do at that time in that place. And God has given us another chance to come here and be unapologetically who we are and save this dimension from itself. But it's going to take all of us working together and speaking up against these things we know ain't right. Let's just be dead ass. I'm listening to so many black people. It's like, I mean, I know it ain't right, but what I'm going to do, you can speak this whole world was created by the words of God. And you think that you're not God, that he hasn't put his word in your mouth, his, cre his creative ability. It says the word, the word formed the worlds, plural. And those worlds don't exist to just different universes. They exist in different times and in different dimensions. Worlds that sit on top of this one. And some of us, like the Bible, it says you are in the earth, but you're not of it. And that's what it's talking about, this different dimension that you come from. It's like I said, the Bible is a very complex book and you have to decode it. And you actually have to decode it with a logical mind, not this spiritism that they taught us. It's a very demonic thing to be emotional about the Bible because the Bible is actually telling us everything that we need to know. And I know because a lot of people are hurt and have come in their heart to a place of being hardened against God. Only thing that's done is separate you from God in you and your creative ability, your logic. It's literally severed you from your cerebellum, Sarah Abraham. And see, you don't need religion in order to find God. You need your whole full logical mind intact. And if you have your mind intact, and you're not emotionally following behind preachers and charlatans and prophets and all that stuff. If you're actually listening, watching and paying attention with all of the faculties that God gave you to negotiate the world. He gave you eyes and ears and a mouth and all the stuff for a reason. And a brain, a cerebral cortex that can understand language. We're the only creatures on the planet that can do that. And you don't think he made you to be God to rule over the planet? Those of us that are awake, that are conscious, that haven't had our consciousness seared from us, are going to have to open our eyes now. We're going to have to wake up and really start to see that book for what it is. It's a decoded message. And it's not, you know, if I was in a biblical time looking at an airplane flying through the sky, how would I describe it? Go back and read Ezekiel. And look at what he's saying about the wheels in the middle of the air and the wings and creatures that had many faces on them. He's more than likely describing an airplane and see the people, the powers that be in this world have this knowledge already. They have this understanding and they've hidden it from us through religions and religiosity. You go to church and the music is being played at the same frequency of a nightclub because it's intended to seduce you, sedate you, put you to sleep. So those of us that can't be put to sleep, you're starting to notice that church ain't giving you what you need anymore. Things just ain't making sense. Wake up. Wake up. We got to go through the house and wake up as many people as we can. Wake up! We ain't going to be able to drag everybody out. Some people too heavy. Some people ain't coming. They they want to go back for their photo books or their cat or whatever it is that mean more to them than staying alive. That's on them. But we need to wake up as many people as we can and get out before it's too late. Get out! Yo! 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 Chill, man! Get out! Chill! 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 
You know, our music is beginning to get real conscious. Our films are beginning to get really, really deep. The people that are in Hollywood and these industries, they know. And they're trying to send messages to us that won't get them outed. Because even though they don't trust the situation that they're in, they still feel safer with the establishment than they do with this disorganized noise and mess that is the black community. It's a lot more people that want to be on our side, but they can't be because we distracted with dumb stuff. So if you want to go ahead and be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed, do me a favor, drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. But until the next episode, class is now this one. Thank you so much for being a friend to the end, the very end of this episode. If you liked this content, then you might want to check out this episode right here. And if you haven't, for whatever insane reason, subscribe to my channel, then you can press this button right here to do so now. Until the next episode, though, make sure you stay unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. You're not niggas.